nitroglycerin. Only a few drops can destroy a neighborhood. Good morning or good afternoon, depends what time you're watching this. My name is Matthew, and this is my podcast on the graphic novel Hardy Boys, Word Up. To give you some inspiration to read the book, I'll give you a taste of the action. The Hardy Boys are two brothers who work for Attack, American Teenagers Against Crime, or American Teens Against Crime. The two brothers are enjoying a lovely day at the beach, but you know what they say? You know what they say, evil never takes a vacation. If that hasn't hooked you enough, maybe the list of characters will. The main characters are Frank and Joe Hardy, the two brothers I told you about, John Pride, and Principal Grapple. The rest of the characters are a deranged scientist, they never gave him a name for some reason, Sidney Grace, and Marcia Kind. And the quote that I found, well, I didn't really find one, unless you managed to find a quote. A bit of a, a bit of a summary. Frank and Joe are assigned to disarm a bomb. If they achieve their goal, or if there will be massive damage, you'll have to read the book to find out. While reading any type of book, it becomes easy. It becomes easy to figure out the theme. The theme of this one is good versus evil, and it's easy to see who's good and who's evil because the Hardys are well, kind of CIA agents or undercover agents. The criminal, criminals or terrorists are obviously evil. The book is set in the past. Well, technically the present for when it came out. During the years, well, in between the years of 1970 and 1979. In the world we know in a large city, but one difference is crime never seems to end. Now I'll give my opinion and analysis. I loved reading the book because I love cops versus crims. I haven't read any book that compared to the series well, except the original Hardy Boys books. There was only one section of the book that made days because they could have found the main antagonist in chapter three, but Frank let it slide. Like if a detective saw a suspended criminal winded from running and says, eh, that was normal. I love the writing style. It's full of action. Yet the book still remembers that Frank and Joe are still teenagers. An example is, in book number 14, Frank and Joe are checking out cute girls and comparing. Well, that's kind of mean if you think about it for a while. That, if the author wanted me to feel a specific way, then I definitely feel it. What I feel is that, well, the only thing I feel that's unrealistic in the book is that uh, the car that they have that drives on its own, sort of. I give this book four out of five stars because it's definitely worth reading, but not my favorite book, which is Jurassic Park and The Lost World, the novel by Michael Crichton. And now to wrap up, Scott Lobdell, I hope I said that right, the creator of the Hardy Boys graphic novel series, has made some great work, like on the X-Men and Marvel comics. But out of the Hardy Boys series, I have only read number 14, Haley Daniels' Top 8, number 16, shh, Number 15, Live Free, Die Hardy. And number 13, The Deadliest Stunt. Wow, I've, I haven't read them in that order, but I've read 13, 14, 15, and 16, and 17, which is Hardy Boy's Word Up. Uh, I really want to find number 10, A Hardy Day's Night, and number th 18, Danger Spells the Hangman. This And now for my little conclusion. This has been my podcast on the Hardy Boys graphic novel, Word Up. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and go get yourselves this book.